for all you provisionists that were going, we need to have a debate, need to have a debate right now. Do you, do you think you'd want to debate this? Think you want to debate what uh, Diognetus's, what Mathe Tase's view was in writing to Diognetus on these subjects? This guy has a reformed anthropology, not a provisionist, not a traditionalist anthropology. Who uses that phrase, inability? Well, it's not the provisionists, and it's not the Arminians. It's, it's not the open theists, or even the Pelagians or the semi-Pelagians. Inability. That's a term you hear from them there monergists. <laughs> them monergists. Yeah. This guy is a monergist in the second century. Louis Burkhoff, he was a Dutch theologian, says Louis Burkhoff was a Dutch American reformed theologian, and his work on systematic theology was influential in seminaries, Bible colleges in the United States, Canada, Korea. And listen to what Louis Burkhoff has to say about the early church fathers. It stands as an assured fact a fact knowing no exceptions and acknowledged by all well-versed in the matter that all of the pre-Augustinian fathers taught in the appropriation of salvation there is a co-working of freedom and grace. Herman Bavink says he was a Dutch Reformed theologian. And this is a very um, well-respected Calvinist scholar. It says he was a, a Dutch Calvinist theologian and a significant scholar in the Calvinist tradition. And listen to what he has to say about the early church fathers. In the early church, at a time when it had to contend with pagan fatalism and Gnostic naturalism, its representatives, i.e. the early church fathers, focused exclusively on the moral nature, freedom, and responsibility of humans. And I think that it's, before we go any further, I think it's at least worth noting that this Calvinist scholar, Herman Bavink is telling us that when the early church fathers were faced with two different forms of determinism, pagan fatalism and the theistic determinism of the Gnostics, that they felt it best to combat those views by focusing exclusively on scripture pertaining to the moral nature, freedom, and responsibility of man. And it's also worth noting that Augustine was a former Gnostic and held to a deterministic worldview, which no doubt influenced his theology pertaining to predestination, and the concepts that God determines all things that come to pass. So they focused exclusively on the moral nature, freedom, and responsibility of humans and could not do justice, therefore, to the teaching of Scripture concerning the counsel of God. And that just is another way of saying Calvinistic predestination. So in other words, Herman Bavink is saying that, at least in his mind, they couldn't. the early church fathers couldn't reconcile the idea of Calvinistic predestination and, and their views on the moral nature, freedom, and responsibility of man, which is very interesting. Though humans had been more or less corrupted by sin, and this is what Bavink is saying that the, the early church fathers taught, they remained free and were able to accept the proffered grace of God 
the church's teaching did not include a doctrine of absolute predestination and irresistible grace. Lorraine Botner, an American theologian, says Lorraine Botner was an American theologian, teacher, and author in the Reformed tradition. He is best known for his works on predestination, Catholicism, and postmillennial eschatology. So basically, this is an expert in Calvinistic predestination. He is best known for his, his work on that. And he says, it may occasion some surprise to discover that the doctrine of predestination was not made a matter of special study until near the end of the 4th century. They, i.e., the early church fathers, as he was referring to here, they, of course, taught that salvation was through Christ, yet they assumed that man had full power to accept or reject the gospel. So this very popular Calvinistic scholar is admitting that the early church fathers believed that man had full power to accept or reject the gospel. People like Polycarp, people like Irenaeus believed that man had full power to accept or reject the gospel. People that are one or two people removed from being personally discipled by the disciple John believes that man has full power to accept or reject the gospel. Some of their writings contain passages in which the sovereignty of God is recognized. Yet alongside of those are others which teach the absolute freedom of the human will. Since they could not reconcile the two, they would have denied they would have denied the doctrine of predestination and i would simply say the calvinistic doctrine of predestination they taught a kind of synergism in which there was a cooperation between grace and free will this cardinal truth i.e. calvinistic predestination that he's referring to here and this is why I say that, this cardinal truth of Christianity was first clearly seen by Augustine, the great spirit-filled theologian of the West. So to address what James White is claiming in this video clip, I would just refer back to, to Lewis Burkhoff, who says that this is an assured fact, a fact knowing no exceptions and acknowledged by all well-versed in the matter. So, at least according to Lewis Burkhoff, if James White is claiming that there were the people that believed in a, a Calvinistic, deterministic way of thinking in the second century, then he is not well-versed in the matter because according to Lewis Burkhoff, at least, who is a well-known Calvinist scholar, uh, this is a fact knowing no exceptions, that all of the pre-Augustinian fathers taught uh, in the appropriation of salvation that there is a co-working of freedom and grace.